Welcome to the first video in the muscle series for the Anatomy and Physiology 1 course. Today we'll go over the muscles of the face, head, and neck region, as well as the muscles of the anterior trunk and posterior trunk, and the arm or upper extremity. The second video in the series will be covering the muscles in the legs. So we'll start out today by looking at the muscles that make up the head and the face. Starting with the head, we see a large muscle that begins back by the occipital region and extends all the way up to the frontal region. We call this the occipital frontalis. Occipital frontalis. In between the two areas of muscle, we have this aponeurosis, okay, this sheet of collagen or connective tissue that connects the two muscles together. The muscle as a whole, again, is the occipital frontalis. If we were to look at this model here, again, you see in the back, okay, the occipital area comes all the way up to the frontal area, okay, the occipital frontalis. Looking on the sides of the skull, we have the temporalis. Okay, remember, this is your temple or your temporal region. So the muscle here is the temporalis. Again, on this muscle, right above the ear, we see, or on this model, we see the temporalis. So we have the occipital frontalis, we have the temporalis. Looking at the face, we have many different muscles here. First, we see that we have these circular muscles that go around the eye and around the mouth. Okay, these circular muscles are called orbicularis muscles. They orbit, they form a circle. So we have the orbicularis oculi around the eye, the ocular area, orbicularis oculi. And then around the, around the mouth, we have the orbicularis oris. Remember the mouth is the oral cavity. So orbicularis oris around the mouth, orbicularis oculi around the eye. Looking at the side of the face here, we have two muscles that reach up to the zygomatic bone. Remember that the zygomatic bone is the cheekbone. Okay, so we have the zygomaticus major and the zygomaticus minor that both reach up to the zygomatic bone. This top one right here that you see at a diagonal is the zygomaticus minor, all the way up to the zygomatic bone. And the one underneath here is the zygomaticus major. Okay, so zygomaticus minor, zygomaticus major, both going up to the zygomatic bone. Looking back, right back from the zygomaticus major, if we drop down into this divot here, we can see part of this muscle called the buccinator. The buccinator. Okay, it's a deep muscle, so we have to go down deeper to see the buccinator. The buccinator is in the cheek. Remember that the cheek is your buccal area. Okay, cheek is buccal. So that makes sense that this is the buccinator. Extending back from the buccinator, we have this more superficial muscle right here called the masseter. Okay, the masseter. The masseter muscle is used, or one of the major muscles that's used for chewing, and chewing is called mastication. So looking at the face, we have the occipital frontalis from the occipital region to the frontal region. The temporalis, by the temporal bone. We have the orbicularis oculi around the eye and the orbicularis oris around the mouth. We have the zygomaticus minor going up to the cheek and right below that the zygomaticus major. We have the buccinator down deep and then more superficially we have the large muscle called the masseter. If we look at the neck we see that on either side of the neck we have this rather large superficial band of muscle here called the sternocleidomastoid. Okay, sternocleidomastoid. The reason that it's called the sternocleidomastoid is that it goes from the sternum and the clavicle all the way up to the mastoid process at the base of the skull. If we look at this model here, after I decapitate him. On this side of the model, we see a more superficial view. 
And then on this side of the model, we've actually peeled back these muscles and we can see down deeper. So on this side, we see the sternocleidomastoid. Again, comes from the sternum and clavicle all the way up to the mastoid process. If we pull the sternocleidomastoid off, we can see a few muscles underneath. These first three here, one, two, three, are called the scalenes, the scalenes. And we have an anterior scalene, a middle scalene, and then a posterior scalene. So you can see that the posterior scalene, let me try and get this lighter, the posterior scalene is actually pretty small. Okay, you don't see very much of it here. Okay, so anterior scalene, middle scalene, posterior scalene. Then right behind the scalenes, this muscle here is called the levator scapula. The levator scapula. Okay, it goes down to the scapula, and when it contracts, it elevates it. So with the neck, we have the sternocleidomastoid. Underneath the sternocleidomastoid, we can see the anterior scalene, the middle scalene, and the posterior scalene, as well as the levator scapula. down from the neck and we start to look at the muscles of the torso, we see that we have a few big major muscles in the back. Looking at the back, these two big superficial muscles are called the trapezius, okay, on the top of the back, and the latissimus dorsi down towards the bottom of the back. We see that the trapezius is shaped like a trapezoid. It's this diamond-shaped muscle. Comes down to a point right here comes up and out, and then up towards the back of the head. This is all one muscle, the trapezius. Down in the lower back area, okay, this big, broad muscle is the latissimus dorsi. The latissimus dorsi. If we were to peel those muscles back, we would see that we have multiple layers of other muscles underneath. Again, this model here shows us a superficial view on this side where we can see the trapezius and the latissimus dorsi. And then on this side, we can actually see the more um, deep muscles. Okay, let me see if I can get this closer for you. Looking at the more deep view here, we see these two muscles right here that are shaped like rhombus. Okay, the top one is the rhomboid minor. The bottom one is the rhomboid major. Also, if we extend over here to the shoulder region, we see that the shoulder muscle is the deltoid. Okay, the deltoid muscle on the shoulder. We'll talk more about that later. And then we also see multiple muscles that are associated with the spine of the scapula. Remember that when we look at the scapula, we see that the scapula has this ridge that extends across the top of it. Okay, this ridge is the spine of the scapula. And if we look above the spine of the scapula, we have a muscle that's called the supraspinatus. Supraspinatus, above the spine of the scapula. Below the spine of the scapula, we have the infraspinatus. Okay, and the infraspinatus includes this whole area right here. Hey, there's actually multiple different bands of muscle here in the infraspinatus. Underneath that, you have the teres minor and major. And then that completes the muscles on the posterior side of the scapula. If I would actually take this off and show you the back of the scapula, there's another muscle here called the subscapularis. Hey, again, your scapula, your shoulder blade is inside here. So beneath the shoulder blade, we have the subscapularis. On the posterior back side of the shoulder blade, we have a muscle above the spine of the scapula called the supraspinatus. And beneath it, we have the infraspinatus. Looking below, below the infraspinatus, we have these two muscles here, teres minor and teres major. And the shoulder muscle, or deltoid, 
sits right on top of that. So if we were then to flip this around, we could look at the muscles of the anterior torso, okay, or the front of the torso. First, up here in the pectoral region or the chest region, we have a pectoralis major and a pectoralis minor. The pectoralis major is this large, broad pectoral muscle that's superficial. Okay, this big muscle is the pectoralis major. If we were to peel that muscle back, we could look underneath and see a smaller, deeper muscle called the pectoralis minor. You see that the pectoralis minor is kind of fan-shaped. It goes out broad and connects to these, um, these four ribs. Pectoralis major, pectoralis minor. Looking down right below the pectoralis minor, we can see another muscle that wraps around and grabs on to these ribs. That's called the serratus anterior. Serratus because it has serrated edges, right? The muscle literally looks like this, okay? It's got a skinny back portion and it wraps around the body and its little serrated edges or fingers grip onto the ribs down here. So if we were to look at this serratus anterior, we can see it right here. And then if we were to curve around to the back, we see it come up. Okay, come up and around right back here. So this is still the serratus anterior. Okay, curves all the way around to the front. We can actually see it over on this side here too. Okay, this is part of the serratus anterior. And then these edges will just go down deep beneath the obliques and grip onto the ribs. It's just much easier to see it on this side of the model. So speaking of the obliques, we have multiple layers of muscle that we can see in the abdomen. We have most superficially, okay, we see the superficial side of the muscle over here on this side here. Okay, so superficially we have the external obliques. Oblique just means that the muscle fibers are going at an odd angle. They're going diagonally. Okay, rectus means the muscles are aligned perfectly with the midline. Transverse means that the fibers are going horizontal and oblique means they're going diagonal, okay? So the external obliques are the abdominal muscles here that are coming in at an angle. If we were to peel this layer back and look at the deeper layer, we see another set of obliques on this side. These are the internal obliques. Going in from the internal obliques, we see these abdominal muscles that go straight up and down. Remember I said that if the fibers go straight up and down, this is called rectus. So this, is, this muscle here is the rectus abdominis. There's also another layer of muscle fibers that's even deep to this rectus abdominis. And that's called the transverse abdominis. We actually have to take off the front of this muscle model in order to see the transverse abdominis. So if I were to turn this model around to the back, you guys can see that these fibers here on either side are going horizontally. So this muscle here is the transverse abdominis. This here is showing us the back of the rectus abdominis because the fibers are going straight up and down. Flipping this model around, we can still see the other abdominal muscles. Here we see the external obliques on either side. Okay, the external obliques are the most external angular muscles. Uh, you can also see pectoralis major, the two large superficial pectoral muscles. Finally, we get to the muscles of the arm. And we have quite a few muscles in the arm. And they can tend to be a little bit confusing, especially once we get to the forearm. But just remember that each of the muscles is named after its location or its action. So when we look at these names, we have clues that tell us where the muscles actually are. And you can figure this out with a few easy landmarks and a few easy hints. We'll start by looking at the muscles of the upper arm. Again, I told you that this shoulder muscle, this triangular shaped shoulder muscle is called the deltoid. If I were to take this deltoid off, you can see underneath it a little bit easier. 
Looking at the upper arm, we have a large muscle in the front of the upper arm and then a series of large muscles in the back of the upper arm. Hey, and these are probably familiar to you, the triceps and the biceps. Hey, when you flex your arm like this, you flex your bicep. Hey, so it's right here in the inner arm area. So looking at this arm model like this, hey, we can see that this muscle right here is showing us the bicep muscle. Another hint for that is that it has these two heads, these two origins or connections. Two means bi, okay, so bicep. Technically, the muscle is called bicep, biceps brachii, okay, B-R-A-C-H-I-I, -I, biceps brachii. If we were to flip around to the very back of the muscles, now here we see the triceps brachii. And there's actually three different um, portions of this muscle. Okay, one, two, and over here, three. Okay, but we're gonna know them as a whole as the triceps brachii. The only other muscle here that you have to know is a muscle that sits underneath the biceps brachii. Underneath the biceps brachii is a muscle called the brachialis. So if I were to pull the biceps off, you see the brachialis right here. Hey, kind of a, a large flat muscle. Don't get confused if the biceps brachii are attached. Hey, if this is attached like this, you can still see the brachialis poking out beneath it on either side. Hey, so the brachialis sits right underneath the biceps brachii. If we go to the back of the muscle, we see the triceps brachii. That brings us down to the muscles of the forearm, okay, the lower part of the arm. Um, the way that I remember these is by starting out right here, okay, starting at the antecubital area or the inner elbow. If you look right there, you see this, this kind of defined little triangle or crease, and you can start there. Okay, you can start counting out in each direction, okay, labeling the muscles from this little crook. Okay, the big muscle right here, okay, going out laterally from um, the antecubitum, is called the brachioradialis. The brachioradialis. Okay, brachial, meaning this portion of the arm. Okay, radialis, because it comes all the way down to the radius on the thumb side. So brachioradialis is this large one on the lateral side. If we go into the medial side, this smaller muscle here is called the pronator teres. The pronator teres. From there, you can divide the muscles up into those that exist on the palm side or the inner side of the forearm and those that exist on the back side or dorsal side of the forearm. So if we're going to look at the palm side of the forearm first, remember this small little muscle that came first was the pronator teres. Then we see that we have three major muscles to know. One of them comes down on the thumb side one of them comes down on the pinky side, and one of them comes down right in the very middle of the palm. So we name these muscles flexor muscles because their action is to flex the arm. So we have a flexor carpi radialis on the thumb side. Remember the radius is on the thumb side. So flexor carpi radialis going down to the thumb. If we look at the one that goes straight down the middle to the middle of the palm, this is called the palmaris longus. Okay, the palmaris longus, right to the middle of the palm. Finally, we have this muscle over here that comes all the way down to the pinky side. That's called the flexor carpi ulnaris. Remember the ulna is on the pinky side. Okay, so if we start at the little crook in the elbow, First, we have the pronator teres. Then we have the flexor carpi radialis. In the middle, we have the palmaris longus. Finally, on the pinky side, we have the flexor carpi ulnaris. Now we can look at the muscles that are on the dorsal side of the forearm or the back of the forearm. Okay? These are called extensor muscles because they're used to extend the arm. Okay? So we said that the first one of these is called the brachioradialis. Okay, the brachioradialis. Next, we have a muscle called the extensor carpi 
radialis. The key here is that the extensor carpi radialis all actually has two different portions to the muscle, okay, longus and brevis, or long and short. I want you to know them together, okay, so it's actually this muscle right here and this short little muscle that you see right here. Those together are the extensor carpi radialis. Again, it goes down to the thumb side where the radius is. Next, we have this muscle in the very center. Okay, that is called the extensor digitorum. The extensor digitorum comes all the way down to the back of the hand. And remember, your fingers are your digits. That's why I remember that one. Extensor because it's on the back, digits because it's going down towards the fingers. Finally, right here on the pinky side, we have the extensor carpi ulnaris. Okay, extensor carpi ulnaris coming down to the pinky side. Hopefully that helps. Again, the next series um, or the next video in the series will be covering the muscles of the legs and then that will sum up the muscular system and the skeletal muscles. Thank you.